In our last video, we drove the loop through Escalante Grand Staircase. This time, we're headed to Nine Mile Canyon and Grand Teton National Park with a brief stop to get some laundry done and take a hot shower. It's really nice to have all the laundry done and all that silt cleaned out of the casita and have the shower cleaned. This is a really beautiful park and it was rated on Compendium with five stars and I can see why. Everything's really clean, new, well kept. From the Richfield KOA, we headed down the 46 mile road of Nine Mile Canyon. Nine Mile Canyon showcases the history of the area. From rock art, believed to be created by the Fremont people and some by the Ute tribe, to homestead buildings built by trappers, fur traders, and miners in the late 1800s. We're here to see all the relics, including this old cabin. I talked to a guy yesterday and he said if you stop at the Nine Mile Canyon campground they have a book that shows you all the locations of the petroglyphs. But we didn't stop there. So we're just seeing the ones along the road anyway. Um, gotta be able to have a pull out to get to them. But it's really cool that you can just pull off the road and look at them. Come on now, mama. Ain't nothing here so big. You got fast cars, movie stars, party on down the street. We're Mary Jane, good cocaine. Lay it down there to get. Double down, throw some dice. Take off now, don't think twice. But hey, don't you want to play? He was hunting a woolly mammoth and it stepped on his foot. So now his big owie on his foot. So that is a man that turned into a turtle, I think. And then that's a guy on horseback. That's cool. Yeah, so really interesting. Really interesting. A big portion of this road was just gravel. It was paved up to a certain point and then it was gravel and they paved it because it was interfering with the rock art. So it was the dust from the road was interfering with the rock art. I think it was like in 1960s. We read that you could do Nine Mile Canyon as a loop, but since we didn't have any cell phone signal and we couldn't discern the road conditions, we decided just to head back the way we came. After leaving Nine Mile Canyon, we headed to Lava Hot Springs in Idaho. Lava Hot Springs is a town named after the hot springs themselves. We stayed at the Lava Campground. Tonight we're doing pork fried rice on the Blackstone, and I got these, I got this pre-made veggie fried rice that comes in a bag, and I just took it out of the bag to save space, the big bag, and cut up some pork chops. And then we're gonna add a little egg Good. The trick is, is to try and do just one thin layer, that way that nothing's soggy. It's nice to have a big cooking surface like this instead of trying to do it all in a frying pan. So we got the meat all cooked, got the rice cooked, and add, adding some eggs. And we're adding some eggs. You did the meat, you did the eggs, and then you did the rice. Yes. Okay. We're here at Lava Hot Springs in Lava Hot Springs, Idaho checking it out. So what do you think about it? Tell me. Um, I thought it was really a beautiful place and well maintained and everything seemed kind of modern and new. Nothing was run down. Really the only thing I didn't like, the most of the pools were too hot for me. So the coolest pool was a 102 to 105 range, but they went all the way up to one of them was like 112 I believe which would burn burn my skin even just touching the water. Probably one of the nicest hot springs we've ever been to, but really the temperatures are out of control. And it was 82 here today. So it's really not that comfortable. It might be okay in the winter time or 
at night. They're open till 11, so the tickets are $8 for an adult ticket, and they're open 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. So if you came maybe at 8 a.m. or 11 p.m., it might be a comfortable thing to do, but there are no cool pools. And there was a shower next to the coolest pool that we were in, and it didn't work. If you want to cool down, you gotta go inside and take a shower in there. No cool pools. So how were the changing rooms? The changing rooms were nice. They were well taken care of. Yeah, and so I went in there and I showered off. So they have a um, military style shower in there and then individual changing rooms. And it was nice. Yeah, very well taken care of. Anything else? Um, how was the men's changing room? <laughs> I didn't go in there even by accident. Okay. <laughs> We left Lava Hot Springs and headed to Grand Teton National Park. Even though we started planning our trip late, we got a campsite at Grovant Campground thanks to the CampNab app. If you'd like to get a spot at a sold out campground, there's a link to CampNab below in the description. We're here at Taggart Lake and we're hoping to get some beautiful pictures. We got up at 5.30 this morning just so we could beat the crowds and get some beautiful pictures of the Grand Tetons reflecting off the lake. Thank you. You're welcome. After we left Taggart Lake, we headed to Jenny Lake and to the short hike to Hidden Falls. It's crazy, there were four people here this morning, four cars besides us. On the way back, we were treated to the sight of a moose cow eating the grasses in the water. The next morning we got up early, again, to head out to the Chapel of Transfiguration in Mormon Row. It's cold this morning. We're at Schwabacher's Landing getting some beautiful photographs of the reflection of the Tetons in the water. And there's a beaver dam in the background. So here's another beaver dam. I wonder how many there are. I wonder if it's the same beaver family. That's interesting. That's quite some workmanship right there on that. Smooth water on the other side. If you'd like to see a trailer that will get you further off the beaten path, check out this video. If you'd like to see a prequel to our nine mile canyon journey, check out this video.